afternoon. How is everybody? Yeah? Oh, right, I'll try not to bore you too much. Um, cool. So it's great to be here in Paris. Um, anyone use Shazam? Great. I can leave. No. Um, so what I really wanted to talk about today was just about Shazam uh, and the types of stuff we're doing now with TV. Okay. Um, just to give you a bit of an update on our numbers, we hit, we hit two huge milestones recently. So 500 million live installs and 100 million monthly active users, um, which, is, which is fantastic. We're really proud about that. Um, we still drive huge amounts of sales. It's between 7 and 10% of all music digital sales is purchased through Shazam, and that's pretty exciting. Um, and we're expanding, and we're growing rapidly around the world. So it's a great time to be at Shazam. Um, something's happening, right? And the big change in our lives is that the mobile phone is becoming our number one screen, right? This is actually US figures, and we expect the Western Europe to follow this trend to be the, the one screen that we spend most of our time with each day. Um, we, we, on average, look at our phone at 150 times a day, and you can see that we can rack up a huge amount of time on this one device. It's that device we wake up with, it's the device we go to work with, we go to the shower with it, or the toilet, some of us, um, and we come home and we go to lunch, so, right? So it's that phone is with us the whole day. So. So you've got this device, right? People spend a huge amount of time with it. But some, something else is changing as well. When we used to see TV ads, right, we would then go to Google search and would search in, you know, Toyota, and then we'd go and check out the brand, right? Now the mobile phone is changing. The habit of searching on, on your smartphone is different to how you do it on your desktop. Um, and this is fundamentally giving a real big challenge to brands. You know, how do we actually capture... Uh, your user's interest and leverage the power of the smartphone. Um, and we're seeing great um, ability to net now with the technology, with scale, with millions of users to be able to give people their, the opportunity to use their phone uh, to connect with the brand in the real time of the TV advertising. I think the big challenge for, for any brand is um, how do you get people to, to your site, right? The big challenge of the app world is we all have roughly about 40 apps on our phone. We use up to 15 of them regularly. So that's a very, very small avenue or entry into the internet via app. So how can brands leverage that? Very much the same way how traditional display worked, that you use things like Google search to get people, to drive people to your site. You can also start to use the brands that have huge audiences on the smartphone with their apps to also do that same type of thing, about distributing uh, um, your users from one screen to your brand experience on another screen. Um, and this is what we're really seeing. Now, we're seeing smartphone penetration be really, really high, and you can see in France and most of Western Europe now it's 60, 70, 80% and growing. Um, so we have huge numbers of users who have their smartphone. We have huge numbers of users who should have Shazam on their smartphone. So the ability, of, or the ability to get them to use those two devices with Shazam to connect is becoming really, really great uh, marketing opportunity. Yeah, obviously, this is probably the big understatement of the century, but, that, but this, is what's, this is, you know, the real key takeaway, that the smartphone is unearthing a huge round, uh, a huge range of uh, possibilities, and this is something that's really exciting. So, um, put your hand up if you sit in front of the TV with your smartphone in your hand. Yeah, yeah big chunk of us. Well, 84%, evidently. Um, and if I look at my house, unfortunately, we're kind of antisocial now. We'll sit in front of the TV with both have our smartphones and probably one of us will have a tablet as well. So this, this consumer habit is, is happening, it's changing, and our living room is really turning into something like a mission, mission control station where you've got your, your remote control, you've got your smartphone, and, you, and you've got your TV. And this is how I think most living rooms of, the, of, of France and around the world look like today. Now, the, the big question, let's go back, the big question people always ask me, well, you know, why, why would someone want to Shazam my, my TV commercial? Um, and um, you can see some examples that are happening live behind me here. You know, the whole point of your TV ad is there's a message, right? You're trying to get people to either find out more about your product, book a test drive, um, maybe find out some recipes, um, discover more features about your product. So by giving them the opportunity to get their phone out and Shazam, you're giving them the opportunity to, to connect in real time at the height of the emotion of the TV ad to get them to take that next step and find out more about your particular product. And you can see whether it's Victoria's Secret finding out behind the scenes footage, or unlocking an extra player on FIFA 15, 
um, or just having a chance to win a competition or get free tickets or a free track. Each one of these TV ads has a great call to action, which is giving people a real reason to get their phone out and Shazam and engage. Now, I think um, one of the other big challenges that I think a lot of people have with this concept is, you know, how many people really will get their phone out and Shazam an ad? These are some examples of some ads that had no Shazam call to action on the screen, so it didn't have, you know, Shazam now to, for a chance to win. And thousands of our users got their phones out and Shazammed it. And this is really how the product of Shazam in your TV ad came about, because we started to see this consumer hab habit change, and people get their smartphone out and start to Shazam things. And this is really the, the starting point of, our, uh, of how our product launched. Now, uh, this is actually a particular campaign that ran um, in, in, across Europe and in, in France as well, and we had some fantastic results. Now, I think one of the key things about your TV ad as well is, wouldn't it be great to actually start to measure and understand how many people are engaging, who are they, where are they, and allow you to then start to understand how successful your TV campaign actually is. And this is, something that, this is an area that we're really focusing on, to be able to give this so type of insight um, so you can actually start to make some really great decisions based on some key metrics of your campaign. Whether you're trying to get people to download or upload or enter details or whatever, we have a great ability to actually stand back at the end of a campaign, look at the numbers and actually help you trying to understand was your TV campaign a success. Now, this can be done numerous ways. Clearly the most obvious one is engagement, right? How many people got their phone out and shazammed? Then how many of them then took that next step to consume more content about um, the, your, your particular brand. We've run now over 60, 650 campaigns around the world, and, and our average engagement rate, that is people have got their phone out, Shazam, and then gone on to consume the content within the, the tag result or in the brand's actual website, is nearly almost 70%, which is, which is very, very high if you compare that to, say, your traditional digital click-to-conversion to uh, type metric. The other really key thing is you've spent a huge amount of money on this 30-second spot. How long did the people stay with your brand after that 30 seconds? Right? How, how much more additional value were you able to get out of that very attractive and very expensive TV campaign you bought? So that's something that we're able to measure. I think the really interesting thing is start to understand the correlation between your GRPs, so your TV plan, and how that, how that compared against the overall engagement. This particular example is showing that there is a really strong correlation between Shazam's and your actual TV plan, which makes a lot of sense. However, there are many campaigns where it doesn't correlate. And then it allows you to think, well, what actually happened on that day? I had a huge TV buy, but not many people engaged. We're able to take that next step and delve into each day to figure out what actually happened on the 16th of May. You had, you had almost 10% of your, your TV plan run on that day, yet you had low engagement. So you're able to then step away um, and actually look at it and say, well, what did we do on that day? Which program? Did the TV ad run in on which broadcast? Um, and this is really giving some more insights about how successful your TV campaign is. Now, I think one of the other really interesting things is benchmarking. So this is an example of a brand in Europe that's run 17 campaigns across Europe. And you can see that the average Shazam volume ranged from 1,671 up to over a quarter of a million people. That's a huge variance in people getting out their phone and Shazamming. And this particular brand has then taken this information and then used it for their future plans, their future creatives, to say, well, you know what? Our audience really, uh, really appeal to messaging with a lot of music in it, with very strong clear to action, um, and they're able to then, in the future, make sure that their TV campaigns are designed in this manner. And I think the other really interesting thing is, who actually got their phone out and shazammed? Were they males? Were they females? What age were they? Um, your TV plan was obviously a target audience that you're buying, it wouldn't be great to actually figure out, was it actually that audience that engaged? And these are the types of metrics now that we're starting to unlock, which I think is very exciting. I think the other thing that is really exciting is something that we've started to do in the US. We're actually then starting to benchmark Shazams versus searches, tweets, Facebook activities, right? I spent six years at Yahoo, and we always knew that TV advertising had the biggest impact on search performance. Now, people are using their smartphone differently, how can you get to them, or how can you get them to start to do that same type of behavior, see a TV ad, go away and search, or see a TV ad, get their smartphone out, who they already have in their hand, and Shazam. And we're able to then benchmark against things like searches, tweets, and so you can start to understand 
um, how your campaign is performing across multiple sources. So I think this is really exciting, and we're, we're hoping to roll out this same type of analysis in, in, in Europe um, next year, but we're working on it. But it's really interesting. Now, in some instances, this may be different, right? Um, in this particular example, it was for an auto maker, um, they were really able to see that by giving people the ability to Shazam in real time, right in the middle of the TV ad, they got the maximum number of people to engage versus any other, other forms of follow-up uh, media. So, this is actually a really good example um, of a major challenge a lot of brands have. So, this is an advertiser in France who um, ran every year a huge TV campaign um, that had one TV creative for the whole country, right? Makes a lot of sense. But they wanted to know was, you know, is people in Paris, in Marseille, in Nice, are they engaging, right? Are they as interested in, the, in that creative, no matter where they are in France? So we did a very simple thing. We figured out the overall population density of France, which you can see on the left. You can see all the major regional, uh, re regional hotspots. And then every time this TV commercial ran and people Shazammed it, we then plotted that Shazam on a map. And that's what you can see on the right-hand side. And if you actually then mirror these two, these two pictures up, you'll see that the absolute or the population density matches exactly the engagement. And so the takeaway that the brand has taken from this is, you know what, that one TV creative resonated across the country. It didn't over-index or didn't under-index anywhere. It had equal engagement, which is fantastic for them because um, to create multiple copies is very expensive. So with this one slide, with huge amount of data, the brand was able to solve one of their biggest challenges um, around engagement and, and whether they needed one or two or three different copies. And when we talk about this world of big data, for me, big data is great, but it's, what, it's the insights that you can take from it. And so you'd be able to take a huge amount of data, whack it on one slide and be able to actually answer a fundamental question is a really, really exciting opportunity um, and really is starting to unlock the possibilities of having that smartphone be a barometer of engagement. So that's my slides. Um, if you've got any questions, please feel free to come and see me after. It's been a pleasure. Thank you very much.